Although histologically the heart is a simple three-layered structure being composed of uh, an endocardium, which is uh, endothelium, same as lines blood vessels sitting on some connective tissue, a myocardium, which is made up of cardiac muscle, and an epicardium, which is made up of generally connective tissue and fat through which the major vessels which supply the heart run. Although it's simple in this um, three-layered scheme, it can be quite complex because of the size and geometry of the organ to understand uh, histologically. So we're not going to attempt to understand the entirety of the heart, but what we are going to try and do is understand the basic components that make up the heart. So on this slide here, uh, what we're looking at is a section of heart. This is a cut surface, a cut surface, and a cut surface. And this surface here, which is an uncut natural surface, is the surface along which blood flow occurs, or if you like, the endocardial uh, surface. And then beneath here we have myocardium, or the muscle layer of the heart, made up of cardiac muscle and the blood vessels which supply the cardiac muscle. And there is no epicardium on this slide. We're going to look first at the um, epicardial uh, surface, which is the surface along which uh, blood flow occurs. And as soon as the slide develops here, we can start to see it along here. So this is the surface along which uh, blood flow will occur. And as we'll see in a minute, this is lined by simple squamous endothelium. There's a subendocardial layer, which we can see here. And this subendocardial layer is a combination of connective tissue and some fibroblast-like uh, cells. One of the particular reasons to look at this slide and one of the features on this slide are these things here, which are called Purkinje fibers. And Purkinje fibers are actually cardiac muscle cells or cardiomyocytes, which have enlarged and become specialized to transmit electrical signals, which is what allows the heart to pace the contraction of its muscle as opposed to being contractile. But they still retain, actually, quite a bit of the characteristics and features of cardiac muscle cells, albeit that they're very enlarged and swollen uh, cardiac muscle cells. If we go up further in magnification, and now we'll pay some attention to the uh, endocardium and the subendocardial layer, as well as looking at the uh, Purkinje fibers and the uh, cardiomyocytes, which are visible here. Here's the surface along which uh, blood flow occurs, and we can see that there are um, squamous endothelial cells that form the lining of this surface. Underneath here, we have the uh, subendocardial uh, tissue, which is mainly um, connective tissue. You can see from the pink staining here, it looks like collagenous connective tissue, with some cells which are dotted around or interspersed here. And these are mainly fibroblast-appearing cells. Um, some of these cells may, in fact, act as stem cells for the endocardial cell population that lines the surface. These strange-looking things here are Purkinje fibers, uh, cardiomyocytes, which have enlarged and become specialized for um, conduction of electrical impulses as opposed to um, contraction, such as other cardiomyocytes. Uh, so a few things we can see about these almost immediately. First is they're very much enlarged, and the cytoplasm is very pale staining, and it contains some myofibrils, not as well organized as we would see in um, ordinary cardiac muscle cells. There are some we see along here. And occasionally, as we'll see a little bit later, um, these can be seen to be distinctly uh, striated. Some of these are binucleate, as we can see here. Others have just uh, one nucleus, uh, say, example, as we could see uh, here. We can contrast this in terms of size and appearance with this bundle of material here. These are cardiac muscle cells which have been cut in uh, cross-section. Now let's go up to the maximum uh, magnification here. And again, we can make the direct comparison between cardiac muscle cells that have been cut in cross-section. Here's one here, here's one here, here's one here. And we can look at what the approximate diameters are. We note that the nuclei are generally found toward the very center of the cell. And the cell has an end-on punctate or dotted appearance caused by cutting myofibrils in cross-section. We can contrast this with this longitudinally sectioned set of Purkinje uh, fibers here. We can clearly see along here that there is some cross-striation AI banding indicating an organized cytoskeleton, but nowhere near as organized as we would expect in a longitudinal section of ordinary cardiomyocytes, some nuclei. And then these structures here, which is how intercalated discs appear in Purkinje neurons. And in the next next slide which we look at, we'll see some of this in just a little more detail and uh, it will look slightly different because of the angle and um, 
exact location at which the section is taken. Here's another slide of a uh, heart, and again, the uh, exact geometry here makes this uh, sort of complex, at least if you're not uh, used to seeing um, tissue sectioned in this way. Broadly, uh, what I'll draw to your attention is that what we're looking at along here and along here is part of an uh, atrium. Um, you can't tell whether it's the left or the right atrium, but one of the thin-walled uh, chambers which receives blood either from the body or from the lungs. And over here, what we're looking at is a section that takes in part of the ventricle. And uh, again, can't tell whether it's left or right ventricle, but the ventricles are the uh, parts of the, the thick-walled muscular chamber, parts of the heart, which pump blood to either the lungs or to the body, uh, right and left, uh, respectively. And really, what this slide is here to illustrate is this collection of structures in here, which is a very large bunch of uh, Purkinje uh, fibers, either um, the bundle of His, the major um, uh, bundle, or the left or right uh, bundle branch. And so what we'll be able to do on this slide is to see some cardiac muscle, atrial cardiac muscle, cut in longitudinal section very nicely here and along here. The endocardium, or surface along which blood flows, is here, and there's none of these other surfaces along which blood flows occurs, nor is there any epicardial surface visible here. We'll also be able to look at uh, these cardiomyocytes and compare them to their cousins, if you like, the Purkinje fibers, which are cardiomyocytes that have undergone some development for the purposes of specializing to conduct electrical impulses. And then in your own time, you can look here at the ventricular um, cardiac muscle, which is much more densely packed and, uh, and forms uh, spiral bundles in comparison to the much thinner and uh, less compacted uh, atrial cardiac muscle. So let's begin by looking at uh, atrial cardiac muscle in longitudinal section. So you can just find a region like this here. And let's go up to the uh, top magnification here and we can um, take a look again at uh, the features of uh, cardiac muscle which you'll have looked at before. So the first thing is here is a cardiac muscle or my cardio uh, myocyte and here's an individual cardiomyocyte here. As the notes indicate some cardiomyocytes are binucleate so have two nuclei, one here one here in this cardiomyocyte, and some just have one, as for example this cardiomyocyte from here to here. You may have noticed I'm referring to uh, this as one cardiomyocyte and this as one, and you might ask how I know that, and the answer is here's an intercalated disc, this dark structure which extends across here, and here's an intercalated disc, so this forms the end-end -end boundaries of this particular uh, cardiomyocyte. We see more intercalated discs uh, along here, you can see plenty of them in the section. The nuclei are broad broadly uh, contained within the um, center of the cell. And one other feature which is nicely uh, apparent here, which you may or may not have seen before, is the fact that some cardiomyocytes branch. So for example, this cardiomyocyte here clearly forks into a branch that joins with this cardiomyocyte via an intercalated disc, and there's the separate branch of it that continues on this way. So this is the, the general feature of uh, cardiomyocytes, um, as we would expect to see them in longitudinal section. And next we look at these and compare them with uh, Purkinje fibers and how they appear in both longitudinal and cross-section. So now let's look at the uh, Purkinje fibers, which as I mentioned, uh, this is a very large accumulation of Purkinje fibers here, which is called the bundle of His, or the left or right bundle branch. Uh, although Purkinje fibers are modified cardiomyocytes and are responsible for transmitting electrical impulses throughout the heart, the uh, contraction of the heart, and if you like the regulation of these electrical impulses, is influenced by the autonomic nervous system. So we would expect to find, and indeed we'll see, in and amongst these Purkinje fibers, uh, many small bundles of um, peripheral nerve. In fact, there's one right here which some of you may recognize. And we would also expect that this would be quite a vascular uh, region, and in fact here's a, an arteriole, um, and there are other blood vessels which we'll encounter as we go in here. So now we're going to go broadly into this area here, and let's zoom in and look at Purkinje fibers. And here they are here, cut in, in this uh, section here, almost in uh, longitudinal uh, section. If we move further in here, what we'll find is cut in cross-section or in oblique uh, section. So the first thing that you might uh, notice here, here are the Purkinje fibers. And again, just as we saw them before, we can see evidence of myofibrils extending through the cytoplasm, but with the AI banding is not as apparent. 
uh, although it is evident when we look in uh, longitudinal section. I think if we increase the magnification in this region here, we should see it pretty clearly. The AI banding, disorganized looking, but AI banding nonetheless, indicating that these are in fact modified uh, cardiomyocytes. Reducing the magnification again, second thing you may notice is fairly large amounts of uh, undifferentiated looking connective tissue uh, around here, and in fact these are embedded in uh, connective tissue. You may also, depending on uh, the slide you're looking at, see some fat, and that's not unusual because fat can act as an insulating material around these particular uh, percutaneous fibers. One thing that you should uh, certainly be able to spot is this material here and here, wavy looking material, and this in fact is peripheral nerve cut in uh, oblique section, and there's lots of it because the uh, nerves of the autonomic nervous system dive into these bundle branches and regulate the behavior of these individual uh, cardiomyocytes. And because this is such a electrically active uh, tissue, um, as we might expect, there are lots and lots of uh, blood vessels. So here's a venule, there's another venule here, there's an arteriole in here, and we'll see, you can look for and you'll see uh, larger uh, vessels if you wish. In fact, if we come out in magnification a small bit and we can move over to the edge here, here's an arteriole, I think. Now, this isn't necessarily the best place to look at the structure of arterioles and venules because the structure of arterioles and venules within the wall of the heart uh, it differs um, a little, or sorry, the structure of arteries and, and veins differs a little than it would in the systemic circulation. But you can certainly see little arterioles, there's one here supplying this uh, larger vessel, and small venules, we see one here and one here, and you can look at this in your own time as you wish. You should also take some time to compare the appearance of the uh, Purkinje fibers, which we see here, with the ventricular um, cardiomyocytes, which we can see in here, particularly um, with respect to their size. You won't really see AI banding cross striations in the ventricular muscle because most of it is obliquely sectioned and it doesn't appear, the AI banding doesn't appear um, uh, easily or well. Um, but you can, if you wish, then go back and compare it with the um, atrial. Um, muscle which we see here. And you can also look at the endocardial surface here lined with uh, endocardium which we can't see at this magnification and with some connective tissue with some uh, fibroblast like cells embedded in it forming the sub endocardial layer.